First of all, I want to thank to Nathan to invite me to give a talk. So today I want to talk about exotic state of uh, matter at room temperature out of equilibrium. So I will explain that which is mean exotic state of the matter. So this is a collage of my presentation. So I, explain, I expect that at the end you understand that this is a, a sort of a exotic state. So this is a, it's a crystal of vortex. So I explain you how we can obtain that without a thermodynamic equilibrium. So this is a dissipative system. So we have injection and dissipation of energy. So I explain that how this is possible to obtain in laboratory, so in a simple way. And also we present a simple explanation of this phenomenon. Okay, so this is an experimental and theoretical work. So there, this is a curative work. So the experimental part is done by my former <coughs> master student in Santiago, the name is Vales Casambra. And also the theory and simulation was performed by me and also by Michael Wachi. So we tried to explain uh, from a theoretical point of view uh, rigorous, rigorously. Uh, this part is given by Mike. And my part also is to give the model and give some uh, intuition mathematical calculation. Because mathematicians don't like when we compute calculation, even expansion, always say that this is not well defined, we need to expand, and so on. So these guys do the more carefully calculation. In my case, I give the more um, intuitive calculation, so the typical calculation that we do in physics. OK? OK. So the state of the matter, so this is trivial. You know, it's essentially we have atoms. For instance, this is a representation of water atoms. So what we have, so depending on the temperature, we have different aggregation state. You know very well. For instance, when the temperature is very high, we have gas. When we decrease, we can observe liquid. And also, depending on the pressure, of course, we have also solid state. So different aggregation of the matter have different properties that we are interested in. So even when we increase the, t the temperature, we can observe more exotic state as plasma. So, well, it, it, this is not exotic. We observe everywhere this kind of plasma state. But in our uh, daily life, we observe more or less this kind of state. OK, so I want to talk about to first to another state, maybe some of you you know. So this is that we call liquid crystal. So essentially, which is the difference? So the basic element of the matter here is a, is a molecule, which is typically with this kind of rope-like structure. So it's, a, it's not like to a sphere. It's, a, it's more a rope. So typically, if between 15 and 20 uh, angstroms. So it's not so long in compared to a polymer. So it's, it's, it's not long, but it's long in compared to a sphere. So what happened with that? So when we apply temperature, we have new state of the matter. So when we have very large temperature, we have isotropic liquid. So the, the molecules are disordered. So it's a fluid. But when we decrease a lot the temperature, we have a, so, a crystal state as a solid state. But interesting thing is between these two states, we have a sequence of different states. Okay, which is the difference between this and this? OK, this is a little disorder. It's, OK, it's not completely ordered. So this kind of material, for instance, this is a pneumatic liquid crystal, have some property of the, of the liquid. It's a fluid, OK? But have a lot of property of the crystal. For instance, an isotropic uh, crystal have very frangency, have a lot of different optical property. So this material have these properties. So it's a, it's a material have mixture of liquid, and solid, that's the reason that people call that liquid crystal. OK? OK, these materials are very well known for a long time ago as this, this very nice property in optics. We use this for makeup, even for the Egyptian. Even we have our membrane in our cells, different liquid that we have inside of our body are liquid crystal. We are organic objects. OK? So I have this very nice property. So in particular, for makeup, when the light cross this material, as a consequence, it's very refrangent, appears different color, and it's fantastic. We used this for a long time ago. But in the last uh, decades, we use this. OK, we continue to do makeup. OK, this industry continues working well. But we use this material as an interface between us and electronic devices. Why? Because this material has very interesting nonlinear optical property, very strong property. 
and also it's a liquid. So if we apply, for instance, an electric field, we can change the orientation of molecules, so we can change the property. So we use this for all these kind of electronic devices. Okay, that's the reason we use a lot of this kind of material, even in the TV and so on. Okay, but why is my motivation to study liquid crystals? I try to study exotic state of the matter. So if you have, for instance, an pneumatic liquid crystal, very simple phase of liquid crystal, if you put this material in between two plates, and we, we use that we call um, homotropic anchoring, so the molecules are orthogonal to the plate, are, this is imposed in this system. So if you apply an electric field, depending on the molecule that you have, the system, typically these molecules are not bipolar, are quadripolar. Okay, so the quadripolar structure maybe is in the axis of the molecule or in the orthogonal direction or in another direction, depending on the molecule that we consider. But in the case that these uh, molecules have, for instance, the quadrupole is in the axis of the molecules, if we apply an electric field, the molecules like to be orthogonal, or parallel to the electric field. However, if we put the, the, the quadrupole if we design the molecule in the way that the quadrupole is in the orthogonal axis of the molecules, so when we apply an electric field, the molecule like to be orthogonal. Okay? Very trivial. But the interesting thing is the following. Now imagine if you apply an electric field in this system, so in the middle of the system, the molecule like to be in the bulk, the molecule like to be orthogonal to the electric field. But if you apply an electric field like that, the molecule like to be in this direction, or in this direction, or in this, or in this direction, any direction which is orthogonal. So we have a lot of possibilities, okay? So what happened we have that? This is a simple example that we have in our desk. Typically, when you put pens here, so the gravity like to put the pen horizontal. However, in this case, the constraint put, there is an angle, okay? What you observe here, you observe that different orientation. Here we have one orientation, here we have another orientation. So the only way that they connect is you have a vortex, okay? So maybe this is more, uh, more daily phenomena of this. So you have different orientations. Here you have one orientation, here you have another orientation. The only way they, they join different orientation is you have a vortex, okay? So that's the reason that I am very interested in this kind of material, because you have this kind of solution we call vortex, okay? I will explain you that these solutions are particle type solution, but are topological, okay? Like to our electron and protons, okay? They have some special property. Of course, you can imagine, if you see your neighbor, you can see trivially, normally we have two kind of uh, vorticity. We call this positive or negative, depending on a convention, but anyone has one. Okay, and as consequence, they are topologically, if you try to destroy this kind of solution, it's very hard. If you have a vortex, the only way that is destroyed is you have another vortex with the opposite charge, and when you, for instance, go up, they join and disappear. Okay? The other possibility is they found a boundary condition, so by image, they found another and disappear. Okay, but it's not simple to say, okay, I can change my hair and that's it. No, it's not possible because they are topological. Okay, so they have a geometrical property to these kind of solutions. Okay, what we observe an experiment. So here, this a glass bean in order to have the same thickness. So if you see this, okay, let me see is the video working. Okay, yes. So if you apply an electric field, so without nothing, it's hard to observe, but you will observe in some moment. So okay, you start to see this is a vortex. Okay, this typically, this is typical size is 15 micrometers, so you can see there is different charge, this positive and negative, they attract and in annihilate. Okay, so in this experiment essentially you observe a lot of a gas of vortices, they are created because the electric field induces vortices, but after that the system try to minimize the domain so they are attract and disappear. Okay, the attraction more or less is one over the distance. Yeah? The interaction is logarithmic? No, no, it's one over the distance. It's more complicated. There is a, well, there is a, there is also the, the interaction, if you take the distance between two vortex, so the, the interaction is like that. So the pen of the product of it's positive or negative, it's attractive or repelling, but there is here a very strange correction, which is the pen of the logarithm of the speed. Okay, so the, the mobility is very strange. Okay, but more or less you can neglect this, it's weekly, so it's one over the distance, more or less. Okay, experimentally, it's easy to see that. But 
in order to see better this, if you can put two cross polarizer, okay, simple polarizer. So what happened is more easy to observe in the experiment. What happened if you apply this? So the polarizer. So okay, can if the material is normal, the light cannot cross, but it's easy to recognize the line that join the different vortices. For instance, this is negative, this is positive, and it's more easy to observe these kind of vortices. So we use this kind of uh, polarizer in order to identify better this kind of phenomena. Okay, but well, in the history, these kind of defects have different names. Initially, uh, by uh, the person that discovered this is Otto Lehmann, who was the first person that recognized this new material. They called this kernel. Okay. After that, uh, a friend guide also discovered that this is well. I put the name here. I would say Friedel. Friedel called this noyau. Okay. So the same word, but discovered in parallel, more later, of course. But different person used different names for this same phenomena. For instance, Frank, which is the first theoretical one, start to work carefully about that, called this disclination. But the bad thing of disclination means loss of order. But the person of content matter used this name and they induced confusion in the community, which is good or is a disclination or not. So at the end, the, the name is given by this Italian guy, Rapini. He called that umbilical defect because a three-dimensional object like, uh, like a string in a, in a very small a slide, okay? So you have a small string. So this is the more popular name in the liquid crystal community, but in general we call that vortex because we observe this phenomena in several different physical contexts, not only in liquid crystals. Okay, so from the theoretical point of view, what we can do, essentially, okay, when we apply a voltage in this material, as consequence of the elasticity, if we apply a small electric field or a small voltage, the, mole the molecule remain horizontal, but there is a critical value in, in which the balance between the electrical energy and the elasticity is broken, and the molecules start to rotate. Okay, this represents the different equilibria possibility, this and this. So we have this kind of pitchfork bifurcation, which is degenerate. So we have different possible orientation. So the simple model that describes this kind of bifurcation, the more simple one, is that is the Gimbert-Land equation with real coefficients. So this equation is essentially has, when mu is negative, we have only zero solution. So if you plot here the real and imaginary part of this amplitude, so it's zero. But when you cross, when this parameter is positive, so we have a family of solutions. Okay, there is a family of solutions. So this very simple model, okay, if you also coupling this in the space, you have this equation. A numerical si simulation of this equation, we can obtain this kind of thing. For instance, here I represent that we call the polarization field. It essentially, is the, is, the, is the real part times the imaginary part, and we observe this kind of solution. Okay, so we have this kind of vortex solution. And this, this equation was initially studied carefully by Ginsburg and Pitajewski in the 59, and using numerical computer also, he performed analytical calculation, but even today, we don't know the analytical solution of these equations, okay? This is one of the reasons of, there is a lot of mathematical interest in this equation, they have very uh, strong property. So this is for the amplitude, for the amplitude of the, 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 the modulus of the amplitude essentially is a hole. So it's, it's, it's a sort of dark soliton, so you have constant value, but in the position of the vortex, these go to zero. So, but if you see the phase, in the, in the phase here you have a jump of two pi in this equation, okay? So this equation has a family of vortex solution with different jump, more, more or less two pi, four pi, and so on. But the only stable state in this equation are the, the case of positive and negative one or, or two pi or minus two pi state. The other solutions are unstable, okay? And why this solution is interesting? Why is topologically? So this is trivial to understand. For instance, if you compute, okay, so I have essentially in this experiment, it's a 2D experiment or 2D situation, so you have a field in the space. So you have in all the space, you have in each point, you have a vector, a, a complex field. Okay, so you have a real part, and if you like, you can represent a complex manner. You have an imaginary part, and you have a, a real part of your field. Okay, 
So if you compute, for instance, here, I compute that we call the null cline of the real part. So that means that the field essentially is horizontal in this blue curve. OK? And essentially, in this, the vector are vertical. And also, if you compute the, the null cline of the imaginary part, you obtain this red line okay, here. An interesting thing, the, the intersection of these two lines correspond to a zero solution. So here, the modulus is zero. And if you plot the, the arrow around to this point, you obtain this kind of vortices. Okay? So why these are topological? So this, for instance, we normally we define positive. So if you continue to do this, this line extension, you can see here you have a negative vortices. So the, the topological reason of this solution is, is the following. So in order to destroy a zero in a plane of the collision of two lines, the only way that you can destroy that is when this zero touch this zero. Okay, if you try to do it smoothly, the only way that you can destroy a zero is this point touch this. Okay, that's the reason are topological. Okay? There is not another way to destroy this solution. The, the, the robustness of this solution is related to this simple topological property. OK, and this is that we observe in the experiment when we use cross polarizer, more or less, this dark region means that the molecules are vertical, so in average, so that means that the vector field A essentially is zero. So you can see always there is four branches that are run to this point and this point. OK? Very good. But, OK, but this general framework, we, uh, it's possible to ask, OK, but it's possible to describe by the simple gimbal lambda equation. So the elasticity theory of the liquid crystal is here. So this that we call Fran Usen uh, energy, that if you vary this energy, you obtain this equation. So as a consequence of the, the, the material are very anisotropic, the molecules, we have different elastic constant. Okay, normally when we use elasticity, if we consider simple sphere, we have only one constant. Okay? But in this case, we have different constant for the different deformation of the liquid crystal, more or less a tree, twist, plate, and blend. So they have the dynamic of the director, which is this N. The director is the average direction of the molecules satisfy this equation. So this, this essentially is the electric field effect, and all this part is elasticity. Okay? But if you move the system close to the ferric transition. So you try to compute from the, this equation the moment that when you apply an electric field, there is a critical value of the electric field in which the molecules start to rotate. So in this case, the value is this. It's related to the elastic, the elastic constant, which in this case is blend, divided by the, the thickness. And if we assume that all elastic constants are equal, it's possible to introduce this chain of variable. If you put in the equation and if you apply a solvability condition, you obtain, again, the gimbal lambda equation. So this model is OK. Describe correctly for the first principle this system. OK? And here is, again, the numerical simulation. And this is an experiment. It's the same experiment, but at different to the video that I showed initially, we use a laser. So in the first case, it's a white light. So we have different wavelengths that cross the, the, the sample. But here we use, essentially, only one white light, so only one laser. So we use a red laser, for instance, in this case. And in that case, you can see there is some, something more or less qualitative good. So the system is well described by this nonlinear partial differential equation, which is this uh, Gimbal-Landa equation. OK, but in the, in, in, in the previous case, I assume that the elastic constant are equal, OK, for simplicity. But if you don't assume that, if you perform exactly the same calculation, you obtain the same equation. This is the Gimbal-Landa, but you have a small correction, OK, which is the first effect of this, this term broke the rotation symmetry. Okay, in the, system, in the initial model here, there is a rotation symmetry of my coordinate and also my variable. Okay, but in this system, this term, as consequent here, there is an A bar. They broke the phase rotation, but there is, of course, the physical system is invariant by rotation, but it's invariant by rotation of the coordinate and also rotation of the amplitude. Okay, now it's joined. The, the symmetry is joined. It's not separated. 
Okay, and this term essentially is the derivative of x and y in a complex way. For instance, the Laplacian, if you use this notation, essentially is the derivative of eta times the eta bar. Okay, so it's a, it's a way to put this term, which is anisotropic. But the important thing for my talk is this parameter mu, which is the bifurcation parameter, is proportional to the electric field. So the old, well, square of is the amplitude of the voltage, or if you like, is related to the electric field intensity. Okay, so first, which is the role of, which is the, the role of this term? So this term, the first thing is, if you look in the experiment, you can see in the Gimbord-Landau theory, the, for the amplitude, uh, for the modulus of the amplitude, the positive and negative charge are, are indistinguished, okay? But in the experiment, we can see which is a little different this to this are not equal, so you see blue color here, for instance. Here you cannot observe that. So if you simulate this equation, now you can see that for the modulus, one is more or less circular, and the other have a cross structure, or have this kind of a square structure, okay? So the numerical simulation, if you perform more carefully, the positive charge is, 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 is symmetric, and the other have this kind of a square structure, okay? So there is a broken of symmetry. If you compute the energy, in this case, this is also very interesting because these, the, 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 the negative uh, particle have always more energy than to the positive one. So, which means that, mean that, okay, this model have is for topological particles, but even this topological particle, when you add this term, you have particle with different energy. Okay, so when the particles are created, are created by pair, so you have one particle and the other, but one of them take more energy, okay? So if you like to imagine you have a, a creation of, of an, an electron, and also with, not a, with a positron, which is completely symmetric, this model predicts that the creation of an electron with a proton, okay? One of the particles have more energy to the other, okay? And in the experiment, if you do more carefully, you can see these are clear, okay? So this is when we use cross-circular polarizer. It's another kind of polarization that takes the, 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 the light, puts it circular. So in that way, it's easy to recognize the, the, the positive is circular and the negative is like that. And even you can see in the experiment here, you can see, well, this is with white light, so you can see this is positive, this is negative, and you can see the collision of these two particles. Okay, so you can see this have, even the mobility of this is, is slowly compared to this, okay, as consequence of the symmetry. So you can see the collision of this. <coughs> okay, so the last ingredient that I need is the co constant thousand transition. This is a topological transition, uh, discovered also by Veresinski, more or less in the same year. So essentially, these three people were discovered, so they discovered that in an equilibrium, thermodynamic equilibrium system, when you change the temperature, for high temperature, you don't observe vortices, but when you decrease the temperature, you observe the pair of a pair of vortices, more or less, okay? And this theory was very important to explain that we call exotic state of the matter. Why? Because before to this world, initially we think that the, 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 the state of the matter are related to the aggregation of the matter, so we have Gas, gases, so very separated, or we have solid, very close in matter, so aggregation. But in this world, they show that there is not a chain of aggregation of matter, okay? The chain in this system is related to the fact that the, the vortex interaction and also the thermal fluctuation are balanced, and when they have this balance, you can observe a transition from no vortex in average uh, to vortex state, okay? So here is our simple representation of the main result of constant Tauless, also Veresinski. So we call that typically Veresinski constant Tauless transition. Okay? And here essentially, which is the idea, it, you have in each point of the space, you have a, a field, okay? A complex number, if you like. So they have interaction between them, like that. If you compute the free energy in this system, and if you compute the, the energy to have a pair of vortices in the system, you have this free energy, and from this is possible to compute there is a critical temperature that the system has, no vortex and vortex as consequence of the fluctuation, the balance between fluctuation and interaction of vortices. 
Okay, so this is a simple representation. You have vortex pair, and here we don't have. And for instance, the, in the well, simple way to thinking in the superconductivity, essentially we have Cooper pair or no Cooper pair. Okay, you have this kind of state as an equilibrium to explain this kind of phenomenon. Okay, for the superconductivity, we're checking this theory, but we need very low, uh, this is in Kelvin, sorry, this is temperature. Here is the thickness in order to check the, the, the penetration of the superconductivity in the system. And in the red line is the theory of the, the Versinsky constantly tauless transition. So this theory was very nice to explain this phenomena of the appearance of this exotic state of the matter as function of the temperature in equilibrium. Okay. Now, so the question that I want to address is the following. So it is possible to have the same type of transition, okay, but in an, equili an auto equilibrium system, okay? Now, the system I would try to study is auto equilibrium. So I, it's a system that we have dissipation of energy and we inject energy, okay? So the balance between the injection and dissipation the question is, is possible to observe a transition from non-vortex to vortex? This is the idea. OK, so if you remember the, the model that I will show you to explain why, why I consider liquid crystal, liquid crystal have vortex. But if you remember the, the movie that I initially showed you, the vortex appear as consequence of the fluctuation, the initial fl thermal fluctuation. But after that, they collide and disappear. OK? But if you remember, in the, this is the bifurcation parameter. I say you, it's important to remember that this parameter is proportional to the electric field, okay? But the electric field in the experiment is not constant. It's an alternative electric field, okay? In all your smartphone, if you look, the, 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 the voltage that you apply in your screen is not constant. It's an alternative. But the frequency is very high, typically kilohertz. Okay, so the molecule, the, the response of the molecule is very slow to compare the kilohertz. So in average, the molecule observes an electric field in this direction. It's not the matter is positive or negative because are quadrupole. So the, answer, the, the, the response of the liquid crystal is the same. So if I put a very high electric field, so they cannot observe the oscillation of the field. Okay, observe an average field. But what happens now if you start to play with the frequency, okay? you start to decrease the frequency, okay? So now we try to decrease the frequency in order to observe what happens when the molecule observes that electric field is not very quickly, okay? It's slowly, okay? So what happened, well, this is from this Gimbal-Landau theory. So we had two very important ingredients. So the electric field depends on the frequency, and also we add noise in order to take into account the fluctuation. The experiment is given at root temperature. Okay, there is fluctuations. So what happened? So here, essentially, summarize that the numerical results. So here, we measure the number of vortex in average. So as consequence of the forcing is periodically. So in this system, we inject energy and we dissipate. So the injection is positive, negative. You have a inject alternation of the injection of energy in the system. So in every cycle of the oscillation, in a given moment, stroboscopically, we measure the number of vortices, okay? So if you do that for very long time, so you can observe that for very large frequency in this model, then the average of the number of vortices is zero, okay? But there is a critical value of the frequency from which the average number of vortices are not zero. The interesting thing, first, the transition is supercritically. That means that it's continuous. So no vortex, and there is a critical frequency from which the system starts to appear the vortices, OK? So may, let me show. The, this is a numerical simulation. So in order to look at that, so you, you observe that here is the variation of my parameter. So I show here the phase. Here is the amplitude. When the parameter is negative, we don't expect to observe vortices. So but in the phase, you observe, OK, this is a jump of phase. So we have a vortex here. So you observe that. So now in this cycle, we have two vortex. But if you wait another, another, another period, you can observe that in average, there is a given number of vortices. OK? So this model, well, it's not this. Uh, the, uh, oh, sorry. The, the, the oscillation is in epsilon. Sorry for that. This is not. This is just here. OK? But anyway, you observe that 
in each period you can observe different number of vortices. Okay? And why? Why we observe that? So the explanation of that is, is the following. So when this bifurcation parameter is negative and grow, essentially in this region the, the fluctuations are very large. So in this region the system essentially the noise dominates the dynamics. Okay, so the noise induces a pair of vortices everywhere. But after that, in this blue region, even when the bifurcation parameter is negative, but decreasing, what happened essentially the, the vortex dynamic uh, control the evolution of the system. Even in this region that in principle we don't have vortices, as consequence of the phase, the dynamic of the phase is very slowly compared to the dynamic of the, amp the modulus of the amplitude, the vortices remain, okay? So the balance between this creation region and this annihilation region give, in average, depending on the frequency, in average, give a constant number of vortices, okay? So this is, okay, in the numerical simulation, if you take a complete imagine, is, okay, no vortice in this region, there is a transition here, so the increase increase, but there is a maximum value, so this is a sort of resonance, and after that, decrease and decrease and decrease, and here there is another transition, but it's very smooth, okay? There is a region, no vortex, and also it's super critical, okay? So we have one transition, this, I show you first. So the explanation of this, if you try to explain why we have this, is a, there is a very simple way to explain that. If you take the initial equation and we use this method developed by Kapips and Bogulovov, essentially you assume that there is, a, there is a, a scale separation. So you take your amplitude and you assume that one part of the amplitude is slowly and there is another part of the amplitude which is very rapid, so this part take the rapid oscillation, this take the slowly dynamic of the system, and if you take this inside to the equation and you take the average in the period of the oscillation, it's possible to show that the slowly dynamic satisfy an equation in average like that, okay? And this equation, if you see this effect of the, the oscillation disappear, and from this equation, it's easy to show that you have vortex, and the interaction of vortex is given by this dynamic, so no vortex is possible to observe. So you take the system, and essentially happen that we observe in the, in the typical frequency that the liquid crystal is used. This is the frequency in the kilohertz. For instance, we have two vortex, and they appear, and they try to <coughs> annihilate. Okay, this is the frequency that your smartphone works. Kilohertz frequency. No vortex is possible. So if some vortex appear for any fluctuation, after that, appear by pair to conserve the topological chart, and after that, they annihilate, okay? So, okay, in this high frequency limit, the limit of high frequency is possible to explain why we don't have vortices. Okay, this is the other part. The other part is the very low, low frequency. What happened here to why we have, again, another topological transition? The reason of that is, okay, if you take very slow frequency, what happened? So the system create vortices, but after that you have a lot of time to annihilate. As a consequence, you have a very large time to annihilate, so you have, no, you have no vortices, vortices appear by fluctuation, but after that to the next cycle you take a lot of time, very large time, so the vortices annihilate it, and you don't observe vortices. That's the reason to this, this second a transition to very low frequency. Okay, so more or less, this kind of uh, topological transition out of equilibrium, you can, we can summarize, we have essentially a balance between the stochastic uh, creation of vortices with the deterministic vortex annihilation. Okay, essentially this is the phenomenon. Now, how we can observe the experiment? So now it become more and more interesting and unexpected. Okay, so I will show that. So, the experiment in order to verify this phenomenon is, is complicated or not, it's very simple, so you take a microscope, okay? Well, it's not very simple to the biologist microscope. This kind of microscope is for liquid crystals, so you have more space to work, but more or less, it's a, it's, a, it's a simple microscope. So you apply an electric field, so this is the generator and amplificator of the signal, so we apply electric field, and we observe with the microscope, and we can monitor it with a simple camera. Okay, so this is in the case that we use this kind of uh, C-tooth uh, signal, okay? So what we observe, this is very close to a transition. Maybe I can move it more quickly in the movie, okay. So you can see that, okay, we have glass beam. So in a period you can observe very few number of vortices appear 
and annihilate. Okay? So if you measure carefully the number of vortices, this is experimental result, so we can observe that, okay, well, measure close to here is complicated experimentally, but it's possible. So you can observe no vortices in average. So the number of vortices increase, there is a maximum after that decrease. Okay, this, this transition was, is not easy to observe here, but this is easy to observe. So this is the numerical result I showed before. And we obtain more or less the same kind of image for uh, this experiment with different signal, for instance, square of C2 signal. And also, if we put a, a chamber to control the temperature, we observe that the critical frequency as function of temperature, we can observe that more or less increase. So we can even show that for different temperature, the phenomenon is robust. It's not related to the temperature. Temperature is only chain the fluctuation. More temperature means more noisy. Okay, so that means that the balance essentially increase. So we, ha we need a we, we, for high temperature, we need a high frequency to observe transition from vortex to not vortex. But which is unexpected, this I like a lot. So we consider to a sinusoidal signal, okay, which, which in principle is more simple. So in the experiment, what happened, okay, so this again is a glass bean, it's not a vortex, so you can see. Maybe I put more quickly, okay. So initially, okay, in the experiment, what, what happened, we have, okay, of course the glass bean is an imperfection in the material, okay? So naturally the vortex appear very close to the glass bean. So you have one vortex here, more or less this is a sort of also of a topological defect. It's possible to show that this is a sort of eschermion. But it's, okay, but important thing, this induced vortex, so you have one positive, negative, another. But interesting thing, okay, you have vortex, okay, so the, the, the imperfection induced vortices, but the, the unexpected thing is if you wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, so the number of vortices increase, okay? And the vortex, in compared to the initial theory I show you, appear in a very well defined position. Look, these appear here, after a period, appear close. After a period, appear close. So what happened now in this experiment? So we have vortex in average, but now the vortex start to self-organize. So the vortex start to create a network, okay, that we call Abrikosov lattice, okay? Abrikosov showed that if you have a system, okay, a superconducting system in a, in a potential, Okay, so the vortex self-organize and create a sort of hexagonal structure. But liquid crystals are very, very anisotropic. The equilibrium of the system is more or less squared. Okay, so if you have particles, imagine you have electron and proton, as I say, you the different energy. So if you have a lot of anisotropy, the equilibrium is not an hexagonal lattice. It's an square lattice, okay, as consequent of this. So if you wait and you wait, the system, of course, the, 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 the glass bean induces an imperfection in the structure, but if you move far, you can observe that well-defined liquid, well-defined square structure. So this kind of a state self-organized. But the interesting thing is the transition compared to the simple gimbal lambda model I show you, experimentally become even more complex. So what we observe, I will show you, so for very low, large frequency, no vortex. So the first, the transition now is of first order time. It's discontinuous. So we, we don't have vortex, and suddenly appear a, a lot of vortices. Okay, now it's not a smooth. Now, only we change, only we change the signal. Huh? I don't change more than the signal. So we observe this kind of crystal. So if you continue to move, they, okay, they remain, but in for so another frequency, there is another transition. We, we expect that also this is discontinuous, but experimentally, okay, you, 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 you need a lot of time to check is well or not. So they have another crystal. So we have different transition from vortex to another vortex. More or less both are square, but the typical distance increase a lot, more or less twice, okay? So if you return, so you have this, Okay, there is a lot of different, well, experimentally it's not easy to check, it's perfectly equal, always there is imperfection. But interesting thing, they, okay, come back to this structure, but even 
here we expect to go to no vortex solution, appear a new kind of state I will show you, which is a sort of amorphous material. The vortex self-organized, but now there is not a, an, a periodical structure. It's a sort of gases or a sort of a lot of defect appear in the system. Maybe we'll show you. Okay, this again is very close to the bifurcation. This is very, very close in order to see more or lower and lower quantity of defect appear. Okay, well, this maybe. Okay, this is more interesting. So even the vortex self-organized in a very complex way. Look, you can see. So now look. So if you see one vortex here appear, uh, and after that there is alternate appear here, here, here. So the vortex appear here after the second period appear here. Now what happened? The system half we call that a parametric instability. So now it's not regular. Appear regularly, but alternate in a period. Okay, first. But the other interesting thing, if you look, there is not now, there is not a square structure. They, they become very complicated. We call that dipole gaze, maybe it's amorphous material, but it's a very strange self-organization of the vortices, okay? Of course, this kind of dynamic is not well described by our gimbal Landau theory, so we can, we can modify this theory. We, we are able to explain a square, but we are not able to explain for the moment this kind of, of very complicated self-organization of defects, okay? But we can imagine, imagine you have, imagine proton and electron, and you can ask, always we have monocrystal, polycrystal, amorphous material, we can observe more or less the, the same kind of structure that we observe in the regular material, but this, again, at this typical size of these vortices, is five micrometers, so there is, a, there is a huge quantity of molecules involved in, but the particle type solution, again, have the same kind of behavior that we observe in the very small and fundamental particle type solution. So this kind of model allow us to really to understand phase transition between very exotic state. Okay, I have maybe one more, this, I'm not sure I Okay, this, even this is the other region I say you. So in the region that we have very low uh, frequency, we can observe more or less more perfect square structure, so you can see. Okay, so we, we observe a lot of different self-organization of the, the structure at given temperature. For the moment, we don't change the, the temperature, but we expect that when we increase also, decrease the temperature, we can observe different kind of self-organization. The only problem of the liquid crystal are these, I say, when the temperature is very slow, a slow mean in this kind of experiment, minus uh, 10 or 20 degree, Celsius degree, so after that become uh, a crystal, okay? Because initially, the person said that, okay, liquid crystal has a magnetic field, you have a vector field, so we expect to observe a constantly tauless transition. But for this material, the problem is for low temperature, which is the prediction of the theory, to observe this kind of transition, thermodynamic transition, we need low temperature. But for low temperature, this material cannot exist. So this kind of transition is not possible to observe in this material. Because the, all the liquid crystal that we know, more or less, the temperature work more or less good, a good temperature, even to high temperature, okay? So, but in compare that we claim that, even for a magnetic system, we claim that if you have any vectorial field, and if you modulate your parameter, okay? But not the forcing, you modulate parameter which typically are proportional to your variables, okay? so parametrical parameter, we expect that if you change the frequency, we expect to observe transition from no vortex to vortex state as consequence of this kind of transition. Okay, so I summarize, essentially I will show you that we can observe topological transition in out equilibrium system. The mechanism is very simple, so only you change the injection of energy and you can find there is a critical frequency from which we can start to observe the emergence of very complicated kind of a structure as is summarized in this picture. Okay, thank you very much. So I have two questions. So. First of all, I did not understand. So what is the other, so I should compare the frequency to what? To temperature or to the mu in order to decide what is the? The, the bifurcation parameter? 
Yeah, not to understand where is the critical value. It's in the frequency. For the no, moment. right, but compared to what? Well, we compare to the, well, this system has a natural frequency, which, which is the typical time of response of the liquid crystal, okay? So, which is milliseconds, okay? So, the typical frequency that we observe is, uh, again, is close to milliseconds, okay? More or less the same order of the typical frequency time. But in the theory I was show you is the gimbal land equation, okay? Forget the liquid crystal. So, in this theory that I show you here, so this equation is dimensionless, okay? It's completely dimensionless. And, okay, for the moment we fix this mu a given value, okay? And typically what we observe when this transition happens with well, the frequency more or less is the half of the typical frequency of the system, okay? okay. And the other, so do you also measure correlation function to say if it's a vortex crystals or not? No, uh, for the moment we don't study the, the self-organization is, uh, is uh, amorphous, one other thing, no. All we observe, so this is room temperature experience, so it's easy to observe and characterize. Thanks. Uh, very nice talk. <laughs> I, I want to know about the, the patterns that you find yes. from your equations on, with the vortices. If you consider, if you don't consider the, the, the time dependence of mu, uh, are those patterns the same one that you will find from from the equations, okay. uh, like a Turing pattern type of? No, first this equation for the vortex solution, there is not pattern. I mean, you have an, a pattern solution which is unstable. Why? Because, okay, the particle have this kind of force, okay? So of course, if you put each vortex in, an in a periodic position, it's an equilibrium, but it's unstable, like to gravity. I mean, if you put all the platen all planet, in an uniform, in a periodic position, it's stable, it's an equilibrium. But if you perturbate one, it's immediately unstable. The same happens, okay? So the origin of this stabilization phenomena is related to the oscillation, okay? Is oscillation, okay? Okay, but this model, okay, I don't show you, but this model cannot have regular pattern. In order to observe that, what we add, we add inertia. So if you add inertia in this model, at that moment, we start to observe, I can show you if you like, in the mega simulation, we can observe square structures, okay? So, just a question here. The, the maximum number of vortices that you form, that's probably related to the size of your sample, right? I mean, yes, yes, yes. But the size, I don't say, it's very big. Huh? I mean, this is, the, this, the vortex structure typically is five micrometers, okay? This is more or less 500 micrometers, but the sample is two centimeters. It's very large system. It's just too close to infinite system. But in all the system, we observe this lattice. Okay. But, but if I make the system larger and larger, that 60, whatever, keeps growing, right? So is it? Uh, yes. Ah, yeah, the average. Yes, of course. So we, we measure this. OK, I don't say you. The number of vortices given by, uh, we give a, a distance, which is compared to the typical size of the vortices. OK, it's the density of the vortices. Sorry for that. Uh, did you estimate uh, critical exponents and stuff like that and find universality classes? Only one. This, this is a, well, sorry for that. This. This is a square root. Okay? The other we don't check, but this is square root and we have checked experimentally and the theory tells us it's a square root. Oh, okay, so mean field is working in this yes. case. Okay. Yes. And this, this, okay, the elasticity theory it's a macroscopic theory. This theory is a macroscopic theory of the macroscopic theory. Even that, this model is universal and you are able to attract the, the more generic property of the system. So this is very nice power of this kind of amplitude equation which are generic, okay? So this kind of model also we expect to serve a magnetic system or another system that you have a vector, complex vector field and you have these kind of transitions. Any other questions? Okay, so let's thank Marcel again. Thank you. So we'll take a five minute break, and for people who want, there's some okay. cake upstairs. Uh, so we get something quickly. This is mine. Ah, you prepare your. Yeah. So I changed because I use this. I have, this is my, I like to have, okay. I like to have a watch here. It's better to control the time. Yeah, but...
you, you know, this kind of device, it starts to vibrate when you have five minutes. Or something. Uh, it's very good to have to control. Uh, okay. I like for it. 